It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. We've got a great podcast for you today. We're going to talk about pain points. And I don't mean like Bob and Ryan Payne. I mean P-A-I-N. What are your financial pain points? Bob and I are going to address some of the more common issues that cause you mental stress when it comes to your planning and investing. We're going to go through our mailbag today. We have a lot of questions on the economy, the trade war. Are we going to a recession? Should you get more conservative with your money? We're going to break it down for you. And on our spotlight segment today, we have our colleague, Michelle McKinnon, certified financial planner. She's going to break down a real retirement plan for you, tell you how she was able to get a couple, another $50,000 a year in income to solidify their retirement. So check it out. We've got a great show for you. So Bob, when it comes to financial planning and investing, we all have some kind of pain point. That's P-A-I-N, not P-A-Y-N-A for the record. These stresses tend to be different for all of us but we all have them, right? So let's discuss some of the more common pain points we come across and how to solve for them. And I think the biggest one is extreme worrying about running out of money before we actually die. You know, Ry, actually that is a common pain point, but it's not extreme worry. The the common pain point is, you know, everybody worries about running out of money. So you're in good company, but if you're extremely worried, then you got a problem. Yeah. And I think the problem is we spend our whole life saving, saving, saving. We accumulate all these assets and we have what you call that proverbial collection of investments. And we have no idea how we're going to use these investments to live on in retirement. We have no idea what kind of risk we're actually taking. Well, I'll tell you what, I got an idea, right? I have a dirty little secret. Bob, I think myself and all listeners this morning want to know your dirty little secret. (laughs) What is it? You are all taking way more risk than necessary in your portfolio to achieve your financial goals. Yes, absolutely. And if the last couple of weeks weren't a wake-up call, you know what's that wake-up call going to be? Because the worst thing you can do is take more risk than you need and actually derail your retirement, Bob. Well, that's what extreme worry leads to. It leads to taking you know ridiculous risk in your portfolio, not understanding that you don't have to be subjected to this wild volatility that if you generate enough income or total return, you're set for life. And you just need to have the ability to see that. No, exactly right. And I think that's the biggest problem we have is we just don't know the right amount of risk. We know we need risk, right? Because if Mm -hmm. we're going to live another 20, 30 years in retirement, you need growth in your portfolio. But the question is, how do you balance the safe money with the risk money so you have a plan that actually works? Hey, Ryan, you nailed it on the head. That's the issue. Extreme worry leads to extreme stress. Now, if you're stressed out, what's the number one way to solve your stress problem? Well, it's like anything else. You've got to run the numbers and you have to see where you actually are and assess things, right? And that's what we call the A to B process where you actually figure out, okay, this is what I'm going to need to spend. This is what inflation is going to look like. Then you can look at your portfolio and figure out what you need to actually do. Yeah, take action, right? You sit there, number one, let's see what's at point A. What do you have in investments? What do you have in savings? What are your passive income streams? And then you got to put together point B, right? What do you need to look at at point B? Point B is exactly that. It's what am I going to need to spend, right? What's inflation going to look like? Because cost of living is going up. Every million dollars you have today is going to be worth half, Bob, in 20 years. These are the things you need to account for. and You can model all that stuff out. And 100% of the portfolios we've analyzed in the last 40 years, Rye, Number one characteristic, everyone took more risk than they needed to. They don't need that worry. You don't need that extreme worry. You don't need that extreme stress. All you need to do is get the portfolio analyzed and understand the risk you need to take. Yeah. So and once you have that figured out, right, that's the first layer of stress that goes away. The next big pain point, Bob, is angst about taxes, right? We hate to pay more taxes than we have to. You know, it's something that definitely needs to be addressed. There's ways to save on taxes. Hey, Rye, it's universal. We all dislike taxes. Yes, that's true. I don't know anyone likes taxes. <laughs> no, because we dread it. We dread doing our tax return. We dread filing. We dread you know, overpaying. But you know what? You can control these things. You can build tax-efficient strategies into your portfolio. Like, What should you be doing right now, Rye, to reduce your taxes? 
Well, the first thing, Bob, I think you need to think about is all the savings you're doing. You probably have a lot of money in retirement accounts. And let's face it, when you're 70 and a half, you have to start to pull this money out of your retirement accounts, creating what we call a ticking tax time bomb. So yes, there's a lot of ways to take money out of those accounts earlier so you don't have that big tax later. So you're telling me after a big booming bull market for 11 years, people have huge capital gains in their retirement accounts. So you know, you got to pay the piper. How do you how do you get around that? Well, you're not going to get around it, Bob. But right now, for instance, the market came down in the last couple of weeks. It might be a good time to say, let me take some of that money out now while the values are lower. And you might be in a lower tax bracket this year with the new tax reform. A lot of us are in a low tax bracket. And even better, Bob, you might be able to put that money into a tax-free investment for life. Yeah. What's that called? A Roth conversion. Oh, I love Roths. Roths are tax-free forever, right? Remember that? Just let's think about that for a second. Tax-free forever. Is there nirvana in tax heaven? <laughs> you had me a tax-free forever. <laughs> yes, exactly. So a Roth IRA, right? All the money grows tax-free, but then you can take it out tax-free later. And these are proactive strategies you can do now, Bob, as opposed to waiting at 70 and a half when it's too late. That's a brilliant strategy, right? And then another, one, another thing you can do, instead of having taxable income, you know, by having CDs or corporate bonds, you should have municipal bonds, right? All the income from a municipal bond is tax-free. That's that another good strategy? That's another great strategy. And that's the thing. I mean, if you look at your actual portfolio, you can design it to pay less taxes by just being proactive. And there's just so many different things you can do. This is just kind of scratching the surface. The other yeah, right, you know, it came up last week with the market being so volatile is that, you know, temporarily, in a lot of cases, you had things that were down. Shouldn't you be doing tax swaps whenever they're available? Yes. Another great strategy right now. If you have losses on your portfolio, and you may have to last a couple of weeks, if you sell those losses and you go into a like investment, you can book that tax loss and you can use it, Bob. You can deduct it against income to a certain level, and you can deduct it against gains later on. So it's another proactive strategy you can do right now. You know, that's what my CPA calls a layup, a no-brainer. You know, whenever you have a tax loss in your portfolio, take it. Right? What happens? You pay less to the IRS, and you can always replace it with an investment that's similar. So you're not going to miss any of the upside. So you get all the upside, right? You get the same position you had before. The only thing you get to do is pay less money to the IRS. So if you're getting the gist here, is there's a lot of things you can do right now to optimize your portfolio for taxes. And as we like to say, money saved in taxes is just as green as any money you can make invested. It's a layup to look at these things. Bob, the last pain point that we see all the time is anxiety about an impending market crash. You can't turn the TV on without hearing about that every day now. You know what, Ry? It's understandable. We had a market crash in 2008. We had a similar crash in 2001. All of a sudden, the market leads you to believe that every seven years, we're going to have a 40-50% decline in value. And guess what? It doesn't happen. No, and that's not to say you don't need to protect your portfolio, but leave the door open for any possibility, right? You don't want to have an all or none solution here. You don't want to say, I think there's a market crash, so I'm going to put all my money in cash and wait, because if you're wrong, you're going to miss a huge opportunity to grow your wealth over time, which you need to do. But on the flip side, don't put all your money at risk. So if there is a market decline, all of a sudden you see your portfolio go down astronomically. So you need to find that right balance. And if you're thinking you do. And yourself, once you have that right balance, right, you can become an investor as opposed to a speculator. And then you start to be smart about corrections because corrections are normal. You know, corrections happen every year, but they're temporary, right? Crashes are very rare. And in fact, they're extremely rare. So you want to be smart about how you invest. The things we've talked about on today's show should illustrate for you just how important it is to have a clear financial plan. Our job is to make your plan robust and to help you navigate through the sometimes hard to understand financial landscape. That's why we created the Total Financial Master Plan for our podcast listeners. We know it would be helpful to you, so we're offering you an absolutely free consultation as a thank you for listening to the show. Here's what the Total Financial Master Plan entails. It's a full holistic review where we look at the big picture, simply bring those statements in, print them off the computer, bring them in the office. We're going to take all that data and we're going to build for you your own personalized financial portal so you can see your whole financial life at a bird's eye view, and we can look at all the critical components. We're going to look at everything from diversification. Are you taking the right amount of risk in your portfolio? What pitfalls or risk do you have? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and protect your portfolio for the rest of your life. We're going to look at income. Income is so critical for retirement. It's much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. 
We're going to show you how to fill in the gap in income when you retire, show you how to optimize the income on your portfolio, and we're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden costs in your portfolio and those annuities, mutual funds, brokerage products. We're going to show you how to reduce cost so there's more money in your pocket and optimize for taxes. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine the most critical question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies we have now worked on for over four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success? That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. And tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan or visit our website bebullish.com or paincm.com and click the get started button to schedule a free conversation call or text 844-752-6692 that's 844-752-6692 or simply click the get started button on bebullish.com It's time for the mailbag. We want to hear from you. If you ever have a question for myself or Bob, you can email us, questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. And if it's a really good question, we'll answer it right here on the show and help us with questions today. We have our man in the studio, Dan Irving. Dan, how's it going this morning, man? Hello, Ryan and Bob. I'm uh, just trying to enjoy those last few weeks of summer. Uh, Might try going to the beach next weekend for Labor Day. I like it. You'll be living like Bob, man. (laughs) Nothing like a man with a plan, right? (laughs) It's true. Dan the man with the plan. All right. Dan the man with the plan. (laughs) All right, Dan, we got our mailbag this week. uh, We got some great questions, and our first one is from Ellis in Morristown, New Jersey. He says, Bob, I hate to write you and sound like one of your more paranoid listeners and clients, but... There's a lot of talk about a correction heading our way, and possibly soon. We are looking at retirement in a couple years. Shouldn't we think about moving our money around to a more conservative investment? Conservative earnings are better than a major loss because I can't make that up on my own. You know, Alice, you're absolutely right. I mean, you should have a conservative strategy. But, you know, here's the problem. A lot of you think conservative means sitting in cash or, you know, sitting on the sidelines. And to me, that's not conservative, right? You know, what's the problem with people who think, you know, going to cash, which I think is what Ellis is implying here, is a conservative strategy? What, what's the biggest problem with that? Well, there's risk with that too, right? I mean, if you have money sitting in cash, you're earning a very nominal rate. We just talked about the brokerage firms now paying you 0.25%. And the problem is the cost of living is going up over time. And when your biggest goals in retirement has to be growing your money over inflation, Bob, and you pay taxes on that. or 0.25% you pay in cash, you're losing money. And you can't lose money over time if you're going to achieve your retirement goals. You know, to me, in my mind, that's the only really true risk to all of you in your retirement goals is this insidious hidden tax called inflation. It compounds, it happens. You know, hey, look, everybody's talking about low inflation right now. But the fact of the matter is, at the current rate of inflation, your cost of living is going to double every 25 years. So whatever cost you live today, it's going to cost you double in 25 years, and you need your money to grow. And it just can't all be in cash. Right, right? And I'd say even now it's more amplified than ever because interest rates keep going down, which only makes more pressure for you to make decisions about your money, good decisions. And I think it also comes back to, Bob, we talked about this earlier in the show, you need to find the right amount of risk. You don't want to take too much risk, but you don't want to take too little risk. And that's where defining your goals and building a strategy around that really helps. You know, Ellis, I want to credit you with writing to us because, you know, Truly, only the paranoid survive. I'm glad you're paranoid, but now what I want you to do is come in, let us do a uh, full review, and show you exactly what you need to do to alleviate these fears. Thank you, Ellis, for writing in. Our next question comes to us from Andy on the Upper West Side, and he says, Ryan, yields on United States government bonds have been falling, signaling downgraded expectations for growth and extending a drop in the market that began as the trade war intensified. Should we be repositioning our portfolio? Man, we're getting the doom and gloom today. (laughs) So Mm. this kind of goes back to what we talked about on financial propaganda. And look, we don't know if we're going to go into a recession. We can't predict that. We know the economy is doing really, really well right now. But I think, again, you want to make sure that you're repositioning your portfolio 
with the right amount of risk. And, you know, Andy just mentioned it, Bob, government bonds keep falling. That means you're earning low interest rates on your money. That's not a great thing. No, it's not a great thing at all, right? And the thing is, investing on anticipation of events is always a loser, right? Because no one can predict what's unpredictable. No one can know what's unknowable. But what I do know is that you're not going to be able to achieve your goals with a 2% 30-year treasury bond as your only investment. Yeah, and it's more risky than ever right now because a lot of money has gone there at the same time. And we talk about this a lot, but it's very dangerous when everybody's putting their money in the same place. And there's a famous quote from Mark Twain, when you find yourself on the side of the majority, it's time to stop and reflect. (laughs) So (laughs) I would say right now, more than ever, with all this money going to bond funds, going to cash, and you might hear your neighbors or friends talking about it, That's not a good sign. You don't want to be doing what the herd's doing. That could be very detrimental to your portfolio long term. You know, it's a question that you get all the time. So, Rye, what is the bond market saying to you? You know, what's it saying? You know, the the market speaks such a convoluted language, nobody understands it. It doesn't say anything. You know, all these events are only known in hindsight. You know what we know right now? Interest rates are low. And we know inflation is low, but net of inflation, you're not going to be able to achieve your goals without a diversified portfolio. So, stock dividends, are absolutely paramount to have some in your portfolio. You got to have the right mix. You got to have the right people. You got to know who to trust. You've got to make sure that you're not dependent on just being in bonds. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our total financial master plan. Now, this is a full holistic review of everything you own. So you'll get to understand not only what you own, We also know why you own it, because we're going to display your goals right on your homepage. So you can see not only what your financial goals are, but more importantly, how well you're progressing towards those goals. And we're even going to give you a notice when you achieve those goals. Right. This is a full holistic review. It's the only review you're going to need in 2019. We're going to sit down with you and go through everything, including your portfolio. We're going to make sure that your portfolio contains the three key elements of a successful strategy. We want to see if you're truly diversified. Do you have enough risk in your portfolio to overcome inflation? If you're tax efficient, I mean, why pay more to the IRS than you have to? You know, Ryan always tells me, hey, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, but don't give them any of yours. Let's be certain that you're not being overcharged by your own investments. I don't know about you. I don't like being overcharged, and I certainly don't like surprises. So let's find out if you have any of these hidden fees that Ryan and I talk about on a weekly basis, you know, in your mutual funds, in your annuity contract, you know, fees are something that can be reduced and every dollar of fee reduction is another dollar in favor to your inheritance, to your children, to your family and income. Hey, look, we all need income. We need to fill that income gap when we retire. But more importantly, most of our clients are retired and their number one goal is to stay that way. And the only way to do it is to have a dependable, repeatable, income stream. And we want to be certain that we have that for you. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan where we're going to answer that age old question for you and your family. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for 45 years. That's right. For four decades, we've been helping families just like yours get from your financial point A to your point B to your goals, to your dreams, with your values, with the least amount of risk, and only the certainty that a fiduciary like Payne Capital Management can provide. That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. And tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan or visit us on the web at bbullish.com. That's bbullish.com and click the Get Started button to schedule a free conversation. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692 or click the Get Started button on bbullish.com. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. And now we have a very, very special guest on the show. Actually been on the show a lot more lately, which I feel honored. (laughs) Uh, We have our certified financial planner, Bob and my colleague, Michelle McKinnon, on the show. Michelle, great to see you. Happy to be here. Thank you. As I always say, we're honored when you can take a little time from the Hamptons uh, (laughs) or being on CNBC, Fox Business, whatever major 
channel your own on that day to, to <laughs> come hang with us. Thank you, Michelle. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> it's like, shut up, Ryan. <laughs> so this is our spotlight segment. And each week, what we do is we break down someone's real financial plan and we point out what we would call the pain points or flaws so our listeners can avoid the same mistakes with their planning and investing. And you worked on a case recently. Why don't you break it down for us? Yeah. So lovely people, a couple years away from retirement and it's... Not that I want to say that certain situations are, are similar to others, but I, I know that a lot of you out there are in the same situation of you've got a bunch of different accounts all over the place. You feel like you probably need to go to a financial advisor eventually, but you've been doing it yourself for so long, you're like you don't even know where to begin. Yes, exactly. Well, I would say 13 accounts qualifies as a lot of accounts. <laughs> I, I think so, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Was this couple upset with that? They had 13 accounts or? Well, I think it's the idea of they're trying to be diversified via many accounts. But in reality, when we did this analysis, we realized that it was just repetition over and over and over again. Even though the funds might have had different names, Ryan, it was just the same S&P 500 just repeated. Yeah. So it's the great irony of investing. We put all our money in all these different accounts at different places. And then we break down the allocation, which I love that about our 360 portal, because you can see all of your assets in one place. You see that you end up owning all the same things. You're not really diversified. Absolutely. You know, in all fairness to them, it's it's not their fault. It's the industry. The industry takes you know, a portfolio of growth stocks with Apple in it, and they call it a different name. And it just, you know, you, you think you have different funds, but, uh, you know, they have the same investments. So you have to strip that veneer around. Actually, what you have to do, right, Michelle, is look behind the curtain to see what's <laughs> actually in that wrapper. Yeah. And I'll just make a comment there, too. Like, you never want to have financial decisions made in a vacuum. If you're not making financial decisions, looking at the whole picture, it's a big, big mistake. Absolutely. And, and when I kind of put all these accounts together and show them the value, they were like, oh, wow, we have that much money. It, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, you know, obviously everyone thinks that they know how much money that they have. But when you have so many different accounts all over the place, you're always uncovering other accounts that you forget about. It's nice to see everything all in one cohesive platform. And I really think that's what eMoney does well. And secondly, one of their concerns was, you know, they're thinking about retiring early. They don't have a massive lifestyle. They feel like they should have enough money to live, but they had no idea. And when I was able to show them that we can literally double their cash flow to be about a hundred grand, they looked at me and they said, wow, like I can live off of that. Oh, I love this. So just by retweaking the portfolio, they go from $50,000 a year of income. That's not the market going up or down. That's just the, the money coming from the portfolio Correct. up to $100,000 a year, which means they don't have to worry about if the market's up or down. That is coming in regardless. To me, that's like that's what I call bulletproofing your retirement. This analysis shows an estimated cash flow increase of forty eight thousand dollars a year. Michelle, is that correct? That is correct. Wow, the best that's part, a lot some of, money. of that is tax free income from the municipal bonds. Money saved in taxes, <laughs> <laughs> just as green money you can make invested. And I <laughs> I want to say this point, and you know whether it's the female, whether it's the male, when it comes to couples, normally there is one spouse that runs the money or that knows where mm -hmm. everything is. And when I showed this other spouse where all these accounts were, how many accounts they actually had, she had no idea. Granted, it, it happened to be a female, and I'm not saying that females tend to do this role, but right. she was yeah. floored. And I, and I think about there have been other clients in our past that have come to us where one client has passed and then now the spouse has to step in and she doesn't know where everything is. And I just encourage you need to make sure that you're, you're sitting down either a financial planner or even just your spouse yes. and showing them where the accounts are because a lot of, a lot of them don't know. And this would have been a nightmare for the spouse that's not interested. 13 accounts, like, oh man, you're already grieving, you know, already things are not great. And you have, now you have to worry about the paperwork for this just insane amount of uh, over diversification, which is not even diversified. Nope. And you would think there's some responsibility on the part of the institutions that custody the accounts. But, you know, every year we find out about clients who've lost money because the institution couldn't reach them any longer. So they just decided to take the money and give it to the state. You have to be responsible for your money. And I think, like I always say about financial planning, it's about love. If you love your spouse, you should have your assets listed in e-money. If you don't care about your spouse, then eh, just keep doing what you're doing. Hopefully everyone loves their spouse, Bob. <laughs> and just I to clarify, so. e-money is our 360 financial portal. So that's a place where you can actually load in, put all your assets, or we actually do it for you, and you can actually just see everything in one place. And I love that. It's like most of us don't even know 
you know, how much money we actually have until you put it in one place. It's crazy. And I see it all the time. Like I just did it with my parents. And, you know, I've shown them this platform so many times, but when I redo it every year, they're always like, oh, wow. <laughs> hey, Michelle, Maybe I want to know who's the, uninterested, <laughs> who's the uninterested spouse, your mom or your dad? Oh, gosh, Bob, that's a loaded question. I'm going to object from answering that. <laughs> All right, I don't want to get you in trouble with you your parents. That's show. a good point. All right. But there is one, right? There's one who runs everything. The other one just doesn't pay attention, right? In this particular case, they're they're very separate with their money. And that's fine, but then you need to communicate what each other has. So if you decide to run your money separate, that's cool too, but you need to communicate as well. So yes. <laughs> Yeah, and we also we found out from the Egyptians you can't take your money with you. So you want to make sure that people know where it is and how it's titled and that you pay the least amount of tax in transferring it to your family ultimately as well. Absolutely. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free and you can download it right now by texting the word bullish. That's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. That's texting the word bullish to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, five ways to maximize your retirement accounts, just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. Or check out the show notes for the episode at bebullish.com for a link. Thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on this show, check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting bebullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.